and there's a huge component of tarot in the Kabbalah. Yep. Do you do you like do you correlate the two? Because I know that when we were talking, it, nothing was about Kabbalah and archangels. It was more about it's, tarot, tarot. It's been uh, yeah, the, the Kabbalah has been brought in to the tarot. I mean, the tarot has a much less interesting history than people would like to believe it. Has. Right. It's it's an Italian card game from the 15th century. Um, That's um, it. Yeah, that's kind of where the tarot cards <laughs> come from. Um, uh, but I don't think I, I, I'm not one of these people that will just layer mysticism. I kind of, I kind of like to know exactly what it is that I'm working with, etc. Right. Um, but they were, but the cards have been designed in a very, um, very clever way, very insightful way. Um, uh, but they were a card game. You can still go to Italy and buy and, and play the game. Um, Taraki, mm -hmm. it's 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 still um, uh, it's still around, um, and then about um, yeah, late nineteenth century, beginning twentieth century. You're getting a lecture here now. <laughs> you're on oh, this, I want to hear this. Like this, this is what it's all about. But, but um, there were there were a few people. Um, it went from Italy to France. Um, uh, the deck. Um, and there's a few people who picked it up and started using it for what we would call fortune telling. No, but it wasn't used as a, for prior to that, it wasn't. Uh, it was just a, a card deck um, that was created for the, the very rich nobility back in Italy. So, the, so it, you know, it was around for 400 years before it ever became a fortune telling tool. And they kind of, to make it a little bit more interesting, the history of it, things were built into it. Um, you know, uh, the Kabbalah was connected to it. Um, and you know, I'm not taking anything away because if it adds a depth to the interpretation of the cards, then that's that's great. I mean, the most popular deck, um, that most people are familiar with the kind of so I've got tarot decks everywhere in my office, the Rider Weight deck, which is the one that you have that behind you, Eric. You have the yeah. Eric, you have the Golden Dawn deck, is that it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Rider Weight, yeah, it's the Rider Weight's pretty much become the basic template from most modern tar tarot decks, um, right. and when that was designed, they basically chucked the you know everything you know including the kitchen sink mysticism wise at that deck um to make it look appealing and make it um i'll be honest i'm not a great fan of that deck but it's the one that's most commercially available um it's the one i teach i use it to teach with because most people are familiar with it so um go ahead you can yeah ask. so so um yes yeah, so it's probably in the last 150 years that most of the mysticism has been added to the tarot deck I prefer to think of it as it originally was. I mean, it's been a, it's a, been a very cleverly designed deck. Um, I describe the tarot deck as containing every life, every human life story from beginning of time to the end of time um, within the pages of it. Um, and it's, and which you know, people go, yeah, but then you do the statistics and you work out, you know, if you're doing a 10 card reading, Celtic cross, which is a, you know, anybody who does the tarot will know the Celtic cross because it's the one that's done all the you know, there's something like four quintillion uh, possible possible ways of laying out ten cards from a seventy eight deck card deck. So right. you say it does have every human life story in it. Yeah, it does. Because it, it's the hero's it. journey.